Hello, my friends, and welcome back. In my uh, few videos I posted previously, I was talking about um, the Ukrainians maybe negotiating uh, or being forced or, uh, you know, channeled towards uh, negotiating with the Russians sometime uh, in October, September, when the temperature starts to change in Europe and uh, the Europeans gonna need more gas for their houses and they will have not much. And that was my, my, my uh, main idea or reason why I said this, this could be how long the war could, uh, could last unless the Ukrainian uh, resistance collapses in the meantime. So that would be what, uh, July, August, September. So I would say two months, maximum three months. There are some signs that they are uh, wavering, uh, they're not doing too well, but nevertheless, that's by the commentaries and by the suggestions of some world leaders. But now we have it um, from, as you would say, the horse's mouth. And uh, this comes from the new voice of Ukraine from today, June 18, 2022. And this came at 1.58 p.m. Ukrainian time, which probably here in the United States was about what, uh, five, six, something like this, eight, seven, six a.m. or something like that. Nevertheless, this is the, the title. Ukraine, and I'm uh, quoting, might resume negotiations with Russia around the end of August. They just woke up and say, hey, when should we negotiate? Uh, what do you think? I don't know, September, eh, August, eh, uh, I don't know. Ju July, uh, I would say the end of August. Okay, all right, let, all right, guys. We might not start negotiating in the uh, the end of August. Do you think that's the way the decision was made? Based on what do you think the decision was made? On their counterattacks? All right, let's see. Ukraine might be able to resume peace talks with Russia in August after they strengthen its position through a counteroffensive. Is this uh, imaginary or is this real? And whether, when the invaders return to their positions of February 23rd, Ukrainian negotiators have said David Arakamiya and Rustem Umerov were speaking in an interview with Voice of America on June 17. I suggest you look to see who funds the Voice of America. And that would get you to about uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, U.S. Secretary of State and the CIA and uh, mm, mm, mm. so when I was in Romania in the communist times, the Voice of America and it was uh, the Free Europe Radio Free Europe. Uh, these were the uh, the radio stations that the Romanians uh, were listening to, you know, in the middle of the night and hiding because the American, the Europeans, are telling the truth. And uh, whoever defected from uh, Romania and uh, was on the payroll of those guys that we didn't know about, they ended up in these things and they were saying about how bad and how bad. They were bad stuff, but they were lying, lying and exaggerating. It was propaganda. And after I <clears throat> grew up a little bit and I uh, started reading a little bit, I found out that these guys were not uh, you know, like, oh my God, they're for freedom. No, no, they're not for freedom. They are for their agenda. And when I looked at the sponsors, then I said, oh, okay, now it makes sense. That makes sense, makes sense. Okay, let's go. Um, we have here, according to Arakamia, the negotiations might resume at the end of August after a series of counterattacks by Russian forces. So how do they know that those will uh, result in something fantastic by then, by the end of August? Why not mid-August? How, how did they calculate? How did they uh, assess that? Okay, I think with this, with that, with so much unknown, uh, that's going to be in the future, obviously, we think in the end of August would be the right time. And I'm quoting here. We do not want to share our plans with the Russians because they can find it open sources. But I think we will carry out a counteroffensive operation in some areas. The head of the Ukraine negotiation group said, these guys think that we're idiots, really. All right. And he says uh, here that Reid also, Schultz, Macron and Draghi likely asked Zelensky to resume negotiations 
with Putin. I covered that. Do you think so? I'm 100% certain. They probably gave him, but they don't have too much uh, leverage because these are, these are uh, British and American boy, uh, Zelensky. He's not... I, I didn't su succeed in this guy. We get it again. Ready? Ready? One, two, three. I think I missed it. Oh, maybe. <laughs> anyway, so let's go. After that, we could move on with the return of the Crimea, Donetsk, and Luhansk Oblast, which are temporarily occupied by the Russian Federation and consider making a political agreement. These guys are delusional or something. So they said by that time they will do the counteroffensive, and after the counteroffensive, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. Excellent. Excellent. But I think we will carry out our counteroffensive operation in some areas. Okay, you will do that. The office of the Ukrainian president reported on May 17 that negotiations with the Russian Federation had been suspended since there was no significant progress since the early, earlier Istanbul communique. All right. They do that. I don't know how they base that assessment. Again, I think it's based on what the Westerners told them after uh, Prime Minister of Great Britain uh, Johnson came right after the four horsemen of the apocalypse left Kiev. Uh, the last one, the chief came over there, the chief and the chief negotiator and told Zelensky, Zelensky, what did they tell you? Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think they're right. By the end of August, you should be done. All right. Now, see, let's see what uh, the Russians are talking about this. What's their reaction to this end of August idea? Comes from the same Ukrainska Pravda, said the 18th June 18, and this is what Medvedev said. Medvedev on negotiations after counteroffensive by the armed forces of Ukraine. And I'm quoting Medvedev. <laughs> if there is anyone to talk with. <laughs> so Medvedev on negotiations after counteroffensive by the armed forces of Ukraine. If there is anyone to talk with. Yeah. The deputy chairman of the Security Council of the Russian Federation, Dmitry Medvedev, believes that after the counter-offensive of the armed forces of Ukraine by August, there will be no one to talk to. <laughs> oh my, because they will be all gone. Oh my God. Quote from Medvedev. The chief negotiator from Ukraine considers it possible to resume talks with Russia at the end of August. <laughs> and he said, if there will be someone to talk to. Great, great, great quote. And he's right. Maybe by that time there will be nobody in the area to talk to. They're all gone. But we'll find out. We'll find out. I think there will be before that. But if things drag, if the Ukraine still have, Ukrainians still have armed forces in a way of uh, military personnel to use weapons, they will still fighting. But uh, uh, as I said, pretty soon there will not be enough personnel to use the weapons that the uh, some West, some Western countries will provide, and uh, to see what's going on, we will find out. Obviously, if they allow us to stay alive by then, if you know what I mean. And by that time, as I said, uh, Europe will start will start freezing, and we say that's it, time out, the game over. Come on, let's uh, get the toys out, get the kids out, let's talk. That's what's gonna be. That's what I think. And we'll meet you in uh, August, end of August, if we're gonna anything then or by then thank you very much for being with me again today stay strong stay smart look for the truth and be just